I think it is absolutely magical that we can translate the colors of a place on earth into a piece of art. I always felt like I had a special bond with nature, especially as a child. And as an adult I think it is unfortunately very easy to lose that vital connection to nature. So today I want to show you how I make natural paint from rocks, sand and dirt. A meditative process that not only creates beautiful textured paintings, but can also reconnect you to nature and the warm and soothing colors of our planet. This is the equipment you need to create natural paint. You will need sieves, preferably one with a very fine mesh and a coarser one. You need a hammer and a safe surface to hammer on, such as a wooden board. You need a mortar and pestle, a bowl to mix the paint in, a jar that you can close airtight, a dust mask and safety goggles. You will need water, a binder and of course pigment material. If you want to know where you can find rock sand and dirt that you can use to create paint, I created a video that helps you find the right material. A link to this video should appear on your screen right now and I'll also link it in the video description below. When you are working with soft rocks, you want to hammer them into smaller chunks before you start working with the mortar and pestle. Don't forget to wear your safety goggles whenever you are pounding on rocks because small pieces will shoot away into unpredictable directions and you don't want to get those into your eyes. When the rock pieces are small enough for grinding, you can take off the goggles, but you need to put your mask on now because things are getting dusty now and you don't want that dust to get into your lungs. When you want to process dirt and sand into pigment, you will need the sieves in that process. Dust and sand often come with pieces of plants or tiny chunks of rocks that are too hard to crush with the mortar and pestle. Start out with a coarser sieve to get your material as clean as possible and then proceed with the finer meshed sieve. It was actually not that easy to find a sieve with a very fine mesh. I finally found one in a store specialized in baking tools. They had a very fine sieve for decorating cakes with powdered sugar and that's what I use for my pigments now. During the dirt grinding process, I sift the pigment multiple times to separate the finer pigment from the coarser one, which I'll put back into the mortar and pestle to grind again. Repeat this process until you feel that there is no more pigment to crush from the material. Once I have that nice and soft pigment powder, there are two different ways I make paint out of it. Sometimes I only want a layer of color and sometimes I want the texture of the pigment as well. I love to paint fluid abstract paintings with many layers of transparent paint on top of each other. If I want to create a layer of transparent color without the texture, I will take my jar that I can close airtight. I fill it with pigment about halfway and I add water to it. I close the jar and shake it for about 30 seconds. After that I let it rest for a bit. 
you can then see the particles sinking down, leaving colored water on the top. When the particles are done sinking, you can then pour the tinted water into your paintball and add binder to it. Mix it and enjoy pouring it on the canvas. Seeing this layer now, I realize that I should have been more thorough with the sieving and grinding because there's still quite some texture in it. I don't mind it, but it would have been nice to show you a bigger difference. When I want to create textured paint, I pour the pigment powder directly into my mixing bowl. I add water first and then the binder. Mix them well and you can pour it onto your canvas. Now you can play around with the texture by tilting the canvas, spraying water or pouring another layer on top of it. You probably noticed that I do not tell any specific amounts of pigment water or binder. That is because I do this completely on sight and feel. One pigment is more vibrant than the other. They are all a little bit different and need a slightly different mixing approach to get the result you wish for. The more you do it, the more you get a feel for it. In the future, I hope I can find a natural binder that will allow me to paint as fluid and transparent as the acrylic pouring medium does. If you have already figured out how to create such a binder, please let me know in the comments. Also, of course, if you have any questions left, comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If this video was helpful to you, it would really mean a lot to me if you would subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.